All right, y'all. Welcome to a new video. I originally did a recording and I had a bit of bit, pretty big rant in it. I'm going to forego that rant. <laughs> uh, it really has to do with the RMC duping and the server issues. So those are still a bit ongoing. The server issues have actually gotten quite, quite a bit better the last couple of days. But the RMC duping obviously makes salvaging quite challenging. And so usually games, um, developers that care more, I don't know, there's some talk that supposedly they have a fix for it. Well, let's just see that fix. <laughs> so, But most game developers will actually do bans for things like that that are taking such a big advantage and affecting other players. But unfortunately, I guess CIG doesn't have that as a priority. So we'll get into the data here. Um, I'm going to take us through. I've collected up uh, each of the different ships. I have a fairly large amount of ships that I purchased in-game. And so I, I use those as the basis to collect data on how much RMC and construction material you can get from each ship. I largely did most of the ships. I did miss, uh, I skipped over some of the really small ones, like the little fighters. Um, you know, I, I don't think they're going to give a whole lot of materials, unless, of course, they're bugged. There's a chance that they're bugged and they may give more materials than they should. Uh, and I'm missing some of the big ones at the end. So this is a fairly incomplete data, but it's, it's fairly complete as it is, but it's missing some pieces at the end here. So let's get into it. So let's get into this data. Uh, a couple things to take note of. The RMC was collected with the Abraid. There obviously is a trawler and a cinch, but those are not quite as efficient. Uh, at least the abrade is a middle ground. I, I personally, and the data I think backs this up, that largely, unless you have a specific use case for the abrade or the trawler, the um, sorry, the trawler or the cinch, the abrade is the better go to all around. Next, we have the CM. The CM, what I ended up doing with this, I initially was I was just gathering it and noting it. But it came, with, especially with the bigger ships and whatnot, it just was easier for me to take a quick data collection and snapshot of the number that showed up of SUs of construction material that you're going to get that shows up on the top of the depot. Initially, once you after you frag it and you start to gather the materials, you'll get a little estimate uh, right above the depot that it's going to indicate how much you're going to get in SU of oxus. So I went ahead and just noted that instead of necessarily collecting. Unfortunately, with the, the amount of money you get for the construction material in some instances, especially with the bigger ships like a C2 or something, I didn't even collect the CM. I just would pop it and then <laughs> take a look and see how much you would actually get, but I didn't actually collect it because it just would it wasn't worth picking up to be honest, which is unfortunate, but that's where we are right now. Next thing is again, I mentioned this a little bit before, but some of these smaller ships, um, I did not gather them as well as I took off the ground vehicles. Maybe there's some good ground vehicles you can salvage. I just didn't test them. Uh, but again, the smaller vehicles and some of the smaller fighters, I didn't gather those. Some of the ships are bugged. And I have some other notes throughout here, but the 300, I think, for example, has been bugged. At least when I tried to gather it previously, it's always been bugged. So the other thing I want to note here is there's a vulture limit because obviously this is more faced or built around the vulture with the reclaimer. You can salvage pretty much anything. This, this data could still be helpful for you, but for the reclaimer, just uh, salvage what you want to salvage. There isn't any limits on how much material you can typically carry. You can usually carry multiple ships, whereas the vulture, they have to be more selective about what they pick up. I assume this is probably somewhat similar with the mole and the prospector. Not completely, but there's a little bit of similarity there, right? Pros prospector, you have to be a little more limited. Uh, obviously, you could take the saddlebags from the mole, so there's some not exactly the same overlap. But at the end of the day, if you have a bigger ship, they can salvage bigger things. Um, you, you can be less selective about things you're actually salvaging. All right, so we're looking here top to bottom. Um, so far, no big standouts here until you get to the C8. The C8 is a pretty good standout here because for the price of the C8, uh, a little over half a million. Uh, what I have here is a re recoup cost. This recoup cost is taking a look at the difference between how much money you can make uh, from a job on salvaging this particular ship versus what it actually costs to purchase. So this is a pretty good recoup cost. Additionally, I do want to note with 323.1, there is a bug. And if you frack a ship, you can actually re-scrape it again. The the material for the the recycled material reappears on the ship, so it might be a little hard to do it because the, sh the pieces will start flying everywhere, not in a large way, but I'm over flying everywhere is a little more over exaggerated. They start floating everywhere, so it'll be a little harder to regather the material, but at least it is doable. So with any of these particular ships, if you see an RMC, just know that in the current as of the making of this video, you can actually gather this material twice after you, you gather it the first time. Then you frack the ship, you can regather it again before you gather up that material as construction material. So just note that. But that again is going to go away in the future. So this isn't necessarily, it's just about what, what ships are worth what value and the way of actually gathering material. All right. Uh, the cutter is another pretty decent one. Um, it's not as much of a standout because you get 
uh, it's not like you're getting less, you're actually getting more, it's just it costs more money. So the first thing to think about for this particular is that the first challenge you might run into is that you may not be able to uh, actually salvage your own ships in the future. Actually, I, I recall in the in the past there was something that prevented us from doing this, or maybe you had a reduced amount of material or something of that nature. But as of right now, in this current patch, you can salvage your own ships. So again, right now, salvaging is you can do salvage claims, so you can salvage ships you just find, and you can do salvage panels. All of those are pretty good options, but this is going to be the next, potentially the next best option, which is salvaging your own ships and or renting ships. We'll get in that in, in the next part. Um, I want to touch on that. It'll be kind of a, a tips section where we'll go through and take a look at the ships you can rent and which of those might be a really good option for you. Looking through here, the Mustang Alpha, uh, the Mustang series, the Auroras, both of those came up pretty light. They're about one SCUs uh, each. So we have the Mustangs here on the Aurora. 100i, a similar situation, much smaller ships. Uh, and unfortunately, they, they give smaller amounts. Same, similar idea for the, um, I think we won't see them until we get to a million, but I, I think the, I'm not seeing the Hornet. Where's my, the Hornet? I was the Hornet like 3 million? Oh, it's, yeah, it's closer to 3 million. So you get 2.6 for that one. But again, no reason. I mean, the the C8 does almost better than that, right? So just looking at the starter ships, if you have a C8, if you have a cutter, those are going to be good options to, and then the Avengers, all of those things are going to be uh, quite better options to go ahead and start uh, gathering the SUs from that. Nomad's actually in a similar spot as well. Um, Nomad's a little further down here. It's about 2.7. So most of the starter ships are in the same realm, being about three SUs, maybe a little more, maybe a little bit less. Yeah. So continuing down this list, the first standout that we're going to run into is going to be around 3 million, and that is the C1. The C1 gives a ton of SCUs of RMC. So uh, again, this is this 15 assumes, and now I want to note the C1 and the A1, there's a slight difference between the two, or I got inconsistent numbers. That's why I decided to keep both of them. The A1's quite a bit further down here because it's closer to 5 million instead of being 3 million. So <clears throat> between these two, um, goodness, sorry, let me get this right so y'all can both see at the same time. Down to 3 million. There's a C1. Okay, so now we have, there we go. We got, okay, so the C1 up here, I can't get it so that it's staying, both of them are staying on the screen here. Sorry. So the C1 and the A1. So here's the A1 down here, and we have the C1 at the very top. You can see here one is at 14, and this one is at 15. So I don't know if it's actually 14 or 15. Both of those numbers are good, though. And I have two test cases of that. So it's, you know, you're going to get a fair amount of RMC out of this. So if you have a Vulture, you have a C1 or an A1, that's going to be the best target to take on and the most amount of money you can actually make. I, I have this set up so that you're limited because you're getting 15 um, SCUs of RMC. But if you want to refract this current in current state and regather the RMC, you're going to make obviously more money than just this. This is assuming that you're taking 15 SCUs of RMC and then the remaining 24, 20, uh, 23, 24, however many SCU boxes you want to take with you uh, in construction material, which is going to net you a lot less money. Um, if you wanted to resort this, you could take a look at which ones has the highest amount of construction material. I, something like the C2 would be a good option for that. But yeah, so anyways, uh, Freelancer, a lot of these other ships come up kind of short when it comes to compared to that C1. The C1 is just a really good standout. Unfortunately, you cannot rent this ship, so you would have to make this amount of money in order to buy this. Um, you know, if, if you think the patch is coming up, I, I can't imagine this will change anytime relatively soon, but anyways, the C1 seems to be a good purchase if you wanted to use this as an option to make money in the game and, uh, salvage this same ship over and over again. Continuing to make our list down here. The next one is going to be the Cutlass Black, which isn't too far from the C1. Actually, it's above it, to be honest. Uh, it, it's okay. Um, but we'll get into this when it comes to renting. This is going to be kind of the, a really good go-to renting option. I think paying for the Cutlass Black, if you know, I'm not a big fan of the Cutlass Black, it's fine. I, it's a fine ship. I have it. I, I don't know if I would keep buying it in game. It's fine. It's just used a lot. And so, but it's, it makes okay money. Um, you get about seven SCUs. So for the price of it, it's decent, right? It's the first one that stands out as far as the amount of construction and recycle material you can get out of it up to this point. It's just, unfortunately, for the 50K mission, right now, if you want to get this as a salvage mission, a uh, salvage claim, you have to pay 50K for it. And that doesn't leave a whole lot of room left over for how much money you can actually make with it. All right, continuing down here. 
the I think those are the the largest standouts, and then you start to get into ships that are just too big. Now the constellation class is actually a really good fit in this as well. You get twelve SCUs, um, which unfortunately you know is less than the the fifteen. But at least if you wanted to use this, I don't know how many people use the constellation. A lot of people use the constellation for stuff like bounties, and so if, I think it's a better ship to purchase over maybe the C one. I don't know. There's a lot of assumptions being made there. If if you like to do ha cargo hauling, then the C one might be the better option. Um, but if you wanted to purchase, if you want to compare the Taurus, take a, take a look at the Taurus on the C1 and compare those two. Um, you can obviously get more um, cargo in the Constellation Taurus. So I think that's the the better option comparatively against something like the C1. But the, um, yeah, just take a look at those ships. The uh, 12 SCUs you can get out of the Constellation class is very good. And it allows you to fill your cargo hold again, right? Currently, if you Frack this ship, you can regather this 12 again. So it's a pretty good income maker for the Vulture as well. And you can rent this one as well. So we'll take a look at that, the rental data. Actually, we'll probably get in this very soon. This is the rest of the data here, uh, making our way down. Uh, the let's So we have a look at all of them here at this point. Obviously, so far, the Hammerhead has been the best uh, overall winner for RMC you can gather. I think the Jump, Karak, the Reclaimer, we'll probably all get close to that. So I think they'll be pretty good competitors. And the C2 is a little bit, only a little bit off. Um, and I noted with the the 600i is um, it was too much for the Vulture, obviously. And I also noted that the angles were a little bit weird. So I'm, there may have been some light left on the table here. And the bottom of the ship was a little bit hard to gather materials on. <clears throat> so let's take a look. I'm going to sort this by most amount of RMC you can get out of a ship. These would be the ones you obviously want to focus on. The Starfare is a little bit less. Interestingly enough, oddly enough, uh, the Starfare is something that comes in as an alternative to the Hammerhead. It looks like the Hammerhead makes a quite a bit more money compared to the Starfare. Sorry, to take a quick drink. So let's finish this out by taking a look at renting. So a number of these ships are rentable. And so, so is the 600i, oddly enough. But we'll take a look here at the renting tab. So what I've got here is a look at all the rentals. I was able to verify the pricing on the, the those ships that are at the Orson, and they did match up with this number. I got these numbers from AUEX. I just downloaded the CVS file from there. And so this is where I, I went ahead and got the purchasing numbers. So at the end of the day, it's possible that these might not be 100% accurate, but I, th I think they, they seem to drive. So, and because in some instances, like you see the 600i here at Lauraville, it's more expensive than if you were to rent to that new Babbage. So just please note that. But note the first uh, pickup here is the Constellation Andromeda. You can almost make the money back. Um, uh, you can almost recoup the cost from it pretty easily by just going ahead and recouping the cost. Now, the cost is a little bit low on this. You can actually, I think you can make this back pretty easily if with the current bug where you can get RMC twice. So that I think you can get this 100% back, not a problem. However, in the future, um, trying to get the Andromeda money back is going to be a little bit more challenging. So if you're getting it from Orison, you're getting a cheaper price on it, um, and you'll get most of the value back just fracking at one time. The next interesting thing to look at is, again, the Cutlass Black. The Cutlass Black, you're getting more than its value back because it costs less than 50K. So if you have, you, again, for the rental, unfortunately, you have to have this money. Um, I also want to note with the rentals, uh, you get it on your account. It's like account. It's basically as if you had bought the ship for one day. I think you can get one day, three days, seven days, and I think 30 days. Um, note that this 44K that is it's showing here is means you rented it for one day. So yeah, you can purchase it as rental in any of these particular areas and in, uh, at these locations here at the vintage rental areas or the luxury uh, rental areas at the particular station or the Grange Point. But just note that this is per paying for one day. So if you want to do three three times this, I'm sure it would be three days. Uh, 30 days should be 30 times this. Um, anyways, yeah, so that that's the, the price. But please note, again, if you wanted to potentially buy the Cutlass Black, renting it a day for a day, excuse me, and then salvaging it over and over again, you're going to get pretty good money back. Um, obviously, you're getting more money back than you actually spent on it, which is really good. It's also less expensive than the 50K for the salvage mission, because right now it costs 50K to get a Cutty Black. So it would make more sense to spend less than that to get a salvage claim on a rented Cutlass Black that you can take out somewhere and go ahead and start salvaging it. Um, how I went about doing this <clears throat> is taking the ship. What I would do is I would usually go to a Lagrange point or something. Like, so let's say you're starting at uh, 
uh, Seraphim Station, which is just outside of Orison. I would then just jump. Let me know if you guys want more me to do a video on this. I could do this, but all I would do is I would jump to a, a let's say Cruel L5, which is a Lagrange point, and then I would just. Um, it's not going to take you all the way to L5, so what it'll do is take you most of the way there. And I would just go off to the right, you know, maybe turn 180 degrees or hunt, turn 90 degrees and just fly off a little ways. And then just leave your ship there, backspace your character, and then bring your vulture out. And then just go ahead and salvage the, the ship. And then you just do that over and over and over and over again. Um, that's how I typically go about it. You, also, you can go to a less known Lagrange point, like maybe Hurl L3 or something like that, and uh, just salvage it just outside the uh, armistice zone. That's another option. So however you want to go about this, there's a number of ways you can kind of get yourself out there. It's really just backspacing your character, making sure you're bound to the station you're doing this work around, and um, resalvaging it over and over again. And again, with the rentals uh, for that 30 days or for that one day, however long you decide to rent it for, uh, it's it's added to your account. So you basically get it. Um, you can use the insurance, everything like that. So the Cutlass Black here is a good example. You can take this, you can get the Cutlass Black, and you can redo this, get this amount of money over and over again. And then if you want to buy an actual Cutlass Black or any other ship in game, you can make that money and, and process that. The uh, 600 eyes is a really good money maker as well. I just want to note that you're not going to, be able to get all these boxes to fit into the... Um, uh, into the little vulture, little vulture that could. Unfortunately, 65 boxes. So the 600 eyes is a good rental for the reclaimer. Yeah, that's about it. This is just a look at these numbers. Again, right now it's currently sorted by RMC. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want me to make this available to the whole community. This is uh, what I want to share with you all. So far, so good. Uh, actually, Starfare is pretty good on its return rate here. So pretty good buy here as well for those that might want, if they have a reclaimer and you want to resalvage a ship over and over again. You know, the Hammerhead would be great. It's just way too expensive a game, unfortunately. Um, having to spend almost 50 million on a ship that, it makes a lot of money, sure. But at the end of the day, it's just comparatively, that Starfare is pretty dang close. Um, even the 600i is actually better than the Starfare. It just, it costs more money in game. So yeah um c2 yeah c2 is up there so the c2 you know um i definitely if you can get any of these particular ships i was surprised how much the money of the c2 had gone up if it was closer to 10 million i would say uh it would be a good buy as well but and it is it's just uh, unfortunate that it costs so much to buy it in end game at this point but it's a good ship so yeah thanks y'all for watching um please take the time to like and subscribe and those thank you all again to those of you use my referral code I, I put that in my video as well and uh, i'll catch you guys next time